This time we're gonna try and create a little latch. And I, have a, I made a sketch, but uh, I don't know. This is the extent of my 2D abilities. Anyway, I'm gonna try and let's start with the handle and get rid of the grid. So I'm gonna make this smaller and we can worry about scaling this after we're done. So let's pull this out. Then maybe move this over here. Extrude this back. And mirror across X. And our handle is looking good so far. Hmm. Yeah, I like it. Let's see. Maybe I can add a cut right here. Actually, I think it's best if I add the roundness myself. Excellent. The problem with doing this though is that you'll see that this area right here is a lot thicker than this one, but it's an easy fix. All we have to do is select all of those faces and delete them. And once we have this, we can simply extrude and I'm actually going to extrude outward so I don't have to worry about flipping the faces again. So I'm just going to extrude out. And there we have it. We now have an even thickness. So let's actually delete these faces. Move this over here. Add an edge loop right here. Something like that. It's a little thin if I'm being honest. So to make it look thicker is actually pretty easy. In this case, we can't just select all of it and use the move tool with control and middle mouse because it's going to do weird stuff. It doesn't always work. So instead, what I'm going to do is extrude, extrude outwards. So we have the desired thickness and then if we go back into face mode, you'll see our faces, our extruded faces are still selected. So now just hold down shift, drag over everything and delete the insides. Perfect. It's a lot nicer. I'm actually going to make this longer and let's model the rest of this latch thingy. Let's go with another cube. And no, maybe something like this. Actually, that's <laughs> that's way too much. So let's make it smaller first, and then we bevel this. Perfect. Now we will extrude backwards and out. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to add a bevel right here. And I do not need all of these edge loops right now. In fact, before I do the bevel, I'm going to delete these edge loops or these edges. OK, let's try again. Bevel. That way I have a lot less to deal with. So shift X, shift Y. And we can uh, fix up the geometry after. Right now, let's just worry about the main shape. Something like this. Oh, we had verts there. Okay, I think it's time to start connecting some of these these verts. Hmm. 
for this little piece right here. I know, I think I'm going to delete all of this. Select those edges and extrude down, holding shift. And then I let go of shift and use V to snap to verts. And make sure we merge, because these verts right here are not actually merged. So we'll merge, which I think I never mentioned actually. Merge is under edit mesh, merge. OK, now it's just a matter of filling in this hole. So we select everything and deselect this and bridge. Now it's just a matter of making this look a little bit more like our sketch. This could be a little wider. goes in here, this goes here, something like that. So what are we going to do with edge loops? I think I'm going to add another bevel right here. Wait, I might have selected something else by accident. OK, there we go. That looks pretty decent. Now the problem is going to be subdividing this. So let's try. Alt A and select the top. I also want to bevel the top. Whoops, not the whole thing, just the perimeter. That looks good. So it's just a matter of adding edge loops now. So let's see, I want one right here I want another one over here doesn't look like we need that many to be honest What I'm trying to do is make sure our low poly, which is going to be something like this, doesn't look too different from the high poly. So this here is a little weird because they're completely different. So let's add some more edge loops here. Let's add one here and maybe one here. And I want this edge to go all the way. That's better. Mm, how can I make this more interesting? this up <laughs> hmm this edge loop though Let's see what happens if I delete this one second. 
bear with me. It goes to hell. It's fine, it's fine. Just experimenting right now. Sarah is a little weird. This is fine, honestly, because this is gonna be such a small detail. I don't, I don't think we're gonna have a lot of issues. Cause it's gonna be, this is gonna be like the, the size we're looking, uh, the distance we're looking at it. So, I think it's fine. And if it's not, then we'll just remake it. No big deal. I do want to make this a little bit wider now. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it. means I need to make this wider. Just making sure I got all the verts I needed. Mm, something like that. Yeah, I don't want to do anything super complicated. Look weird to you. Oh, look, there's a vert in the middle. If you ever have like this random vert that doesn't seem connected to a lot of edges, it's actually very easy to get rid of them. I mean, aside from just selecting it and deleting it, you can actually just double click to select all the verts and press delete. And it's only going to delete those uh, extra verts that aren't like necessary. See, we have another one here. So select everything, just delete, and it's only going to get rid of those little Maya tip. I think this is good enough. So now pasting our, our latch from a different document is super easy. Just select everything, control C, and then go to uh, whatever file we want to paste in and control V. And of course we can't see it because it's centered. So let's move it into place. And it should come as a group, even though I'm pretty sure I didn't have it grouped. So let's hold down J and snap it a little bit more and simply position it. Let's see what that looks like. Not bad. I mean, it's missing something. It's missing detail, pretty much. I'm wondering if we could just reuse this piece. Like this. Hey, that's not too bad. And let's maybe lift this up. <laughs> it's gonna look a little weird, but I mean, we can fix that. Go back to object mode and see, maybe make this right here smaller. 
bring these edges closer together. Make this edge smaller. Same thing with this one. It's a little bit better. That looks pretty cool. We'll worry about how we're gonna make the low poly later. And in fact, I think I'm even gonna I'm even gonna get rid of this for now. I'm not sure. Yeah, it does look a little bit empty. So I'll probably end up uh, duplicating this piece and like trying to move it over here or something. I'll figure something out. Whoa. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So let's actually, let's just combine these. No, wait, I can't combine them though. I shouldn't. It's because one thing I haven't really mentioned is that whenever I press Shift X, Y, or Z to mirror, I added an extra command to the mirror. And what it does is merge verts. So if I have a lot of objects like these, and they just happen to have verts that are coinciding with each other, they're gonna merge. So what I have to do, I'm just gonna use the traditional merge. So I'm gonna group all of these, and instead of using my hotkey, I'm gonna use a normal merge. Because if I use mine, some of the verts here might merge with each other because I'm dealing with multiple objects. So we're gonna use normal merge. I mean mirror, <laughs> we got that. Okay, delete history, because sometimes it messes up. If we try to add another one, delete history just in case. And mirror Z, finally. There we go, looking pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Wowzer. I like it. Let's bring back our reference. And now we're going to model the handle. Does it look the same? Looks the same in every single image. So we're just gonna model this one. It looks pretty basic, but I think it will do. But, oops, one second, control shift A. Okay, so I'm just gonna hide this and I'm gonna work in a, a blank viewport just so it's a little bit easier. And I'm, I just wanna work at the, the origin of my scene so I can mirror across very easily. So let's just try to get these proportions. I'm only gonna model this part right now and the actual handle, I'll do it after. Something like this. Actually, that's pretty good. And I'm not sure if I want this Boolean first or the bevel. I don't think the Boolean is gonna work. So let's go with the bevel first. And this time, because this is such a tiny piece, I don't think we I really need that many segments. I mean, let's test it out, control. Wait, no, not control one. Let's bring everything else back. And let me just very quickly position this right here, kind of where it's going to be. And yeah, it has enough segments for, for its size. Okay, so move that control Z, move all of that back, hide. Okay, good. One thing I do want to adjust is the fraction. Whoa, maybe not that much this and select these edges and soften just so it looks nicer for the boolean we can just 
actually duplicate this piece and then repurpose it. That is the wrong way. Okay. I think it needs to be smaller. Like this. Let's make it a little bit wider. Shift X, and that's why I'm working at, at the, the center of my scene. Okay, Shift W. So this goes, this curve goes beyond the bevel. So maybe like this, that is, is that too much? Let's just do it very quickly. And we're gonna undo if it's, if it's wrong. It is a little big compared to the reference, but I don't mind that much. I think I, I like the way. Now, you know what? I'm gonna try to make it more like the reference so then I can add a decal right here. So I, I need a little bit more space here. So let's make this up here. And I'm just trying to get these edges to kind of line up. We can adjust it later, actually. Okay. Let's actually do that. Oh, what is up with this? Let's flatten this first. Okay. Let's boolean again. I think that's a little nicer. Now it's just a matter of merging some of these verts. So let's see, where's my target well tool? I actually bound it to the U key. Let's see, this edge is gonna go right here. Up and up and shift X. It's not flat. I think that's good enough. And now I want to start adding some edge loops so I can control the subdivision. And we can do this very easily by pressing Alt E. That's my hotkey for selecting only the hard edges. So deselect these and these and everything else is fine I think okay and now just bevel and turn chamfer off and we get our control edge loops these look a little bit weird actually mm. That's nicer. I actually like the default. Okay, so now I'm just gonna adjust these edges a little bit. Hold on D, click there. Hold down, Shift X. Okay, not bad. So what I want to do with these edges, let's add an edge loop right here. Select it and snap it right, oops, hold down D and click outside. Okay, perfect. Let's snap it right here. And we need another one right here. So same way, select the whole loop. Snap it. 
Perfect. And what do I want to do with this loop? I'm actually going to move the whole thing back a little further. So let's go to our top view, Shift F. And move this whole thing back a little bit. Actually, maybe not these. So now I can add an edge loop here. Let's go back to our perspective view. And yeah, sure. That is looking pretty decent. I can even fix this right here with my other edge loops. Looks pretty good. So shift X. And this is a little bit thicker actually than this piece. Hmm. I could fix that. Yeah, let's go for it. YOLO. I'm gonna repurpose. Will that work? Okay, let's actually I have no plan, so let me just hope that this works. Delete those faces. Okay, and then Alt A, click here. Control Shift E to extract. Hold on V, snap it there. Uh, actually, no, yeah. Yeah, sure, let's combine and then merge. Okay, and now we, what do we do with this? Select, oh wait, is it not merged? It isn't. Why didn't it merge? Did I not click the merge? I think, oh, I think I didn't click the merge button, whoops. <laughs> I clicked a different uh, shelf button. Okay, cool. So now select the whole, uh, the whole, <laughs> And bridge. Cool, and now we can get rid of this edge loop right here. And move this one over here. Well that. So that was a little bit unnecessary, but I don't know, I just really want to do that. Make this piece thinner than this piece. That's a good one. It's nice so Okay, let's stop messing around with this piece and let's actually do the handle now. And I know these still look different. All you have to do is compare the distance here to the distance here. It's massive. But I think this might read a little bit better at a distance. Let's leave it like that for now. And oh yeah, the handle. So we're gonna need more booleans. So shift right, oh wait, with nothing selected, shift right click, cube. And we're gonna have to cut right here. It's gonna go into wireframe. Maybe there, okay. Let's do the difference. 
delete history to get rid of all those extra uh, junk. And now let's just fix the geometry over here. I'm just going to do this by hand. Sometimes we get so obsessed over trying to find this like super automated way of doing everything that if we just like did it by hand, we, we would be done in like a few minutes. So don't be af afraid of just doing things manually every now and then. Actually, I wanna show you something. Let's go to our front view and I can barely see, so, okay. So the multi-cut, we can also use it to slice through our mesh. If you hold on shift, it will snap, or we can click and then click again. If you click uh, one point at a time, then you can reposition them and even snap them to verts and stuff. So if I hold down B, I could like snap this right here, or I can even snap it to the grid if I hold on X, but the grid is kind of zoomed out. So, so kind of no point snapping to the grid, but let's see. And it's camera based too, so I can just move the viewport and cut after. So I want this cut to be right here. And when I'm ready, I'll just press enter. I'm gonna another cut right here. Yeah, let's do that one. So uh, actually, I'm just going to drag, hold on shift. The problem with dragging down, I mean, just dragging and holding down shift is that it's harder to reposition. So that's why sometimes it's better to just click and then move it into place and then press enter. I actually don't need this many loops. I think I'm gonna merge some of these, in fact. Select those and then collapse. Okay, not this one. G to collapse. Actually, I, did, I, I messed that up. Let's do this one first. This one goes there, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I wanted to do. here. Control shift. There we go. This goes right here. Let's move this thing up. Shift X. And that looks good. I'm missing something here though. Oh, okay. I need like an edge loop that goes this way. Hmm, this is gonna mess things up, but we'll fix them. Not to worry. Let's 
get rid of this one for now. Weld that right there. I think I can delete this. Oops, not that one, just this one. Oh, it goes all the way around. Okay. You know what, let's just add it, add it right here. Perfect. Oh, I said we were gonna do the handle and we actually haven't done the handle. Whoops, my bad. Okay, we're ready to do the handle now. Uh, what do I need? What does this handle look like? It's pretty similar, actually. Again, let me just temporarily unhide all of this by pressing H. Move this into place just to see what it looks like. So it kind of goes up there and the handle goes down. Ugh, that edge looks super sharp, but Maybe we'll fix it later. Maybe we won't. Yeah, before we even fix that, let's just do the actual handle. Okay. So I want a similar shape, so I am just going to borrow this and let's see should increase the size of our selection okay control shift d and then we're going to move this over here and then i'm going to move it up i'm going to hide this for now and shift y no wait i need to flip it first so Hold on J key and scale it down to flip it. See, we basically uh, scaled it in a negative axis. And now, Shift Y, perfect, this is what I want. So now I can just do this and start building my handle this way. And let's bring this back. Whoops, what did I do? Okay, so we'll bring this back and we'll extrude this piece not bad And let's actually make this one thinner. Shift X. This looks so weird. Oh, okay, this edge. Actually, let's just delete them and can, let's create them again. Now we just need the middle area. I can actually recycle this yet again, so. <laughs> Let's select all of these faces, Control shift d Let's get rid of this mid middle edge loop for now. And the handle, I don't want it to be quite round. So I want it to look a little bit wider. Let's recenter our pivot, which you can also do under Modify, Center Pivot. Let's move this over here. And then shift X. 
That looks good. We just need some control edge loops. So select this one, bevel it all the way over there. Hmm. Maybe I want to mirror this. So shift Z. I ended up making it look super round, <laughs> but it's all right. I mean, we could have just used a cylinder there. That's whatever. No one's going to notice it. Now let's add some of the detailing. However, I think before we get into the details, we should take a look at the whole model just one more time. I should probably just create layers with all of this. So should I do that? Yeah, sure. Let's create a new, select the items that I previously had hidden, which are these, and create a new layer. Create, I think this is the one. Perfect. That's a lot easier to work with. Same thing with these. Actually, the handle, I'm just going to group it, Control G handle, and then just bring it out to take another look. Okay, it's definitely too big. So what I'm going to do is simply, I'm not just going to scale it, because that's going to mess up some of these shapes. But I just wanted to get a sense of how it was looking. All right. So back to, oh, wait a minute. You know, my hotkeys only work, my mirror hotkeys only work across the origin. But you don't need to have an object at the center of your scene to mirror it. The Maya's native mirror actually has some options for that. For instance, just as a demonstration, I'm going to whoops, extrude this face right here. Just something crazy. OK, and this object, if I mirror across X, yeah, by default, it's going to go across the world origin. But you can also set this to be object basically across the object's pivot. So if it's not centered, then this is not going to work. Or if your pivot is all wrong, then you can just use bounding box. And that didn't quite work, actually. Oh, OK, that's because the bounding box is going to be in the middle of the square because I made this giant extrusion. OK, so no bounding box object. And that way, we don't have to uh, move it all the way to the center every single time. But let me do that. And I'm looking now at this little bit, a uh, bit of detail right there, but I don't know, some things are better left for the normal map. However, yeah, in my experience, you want to do as much as you can in the high poly and then leave other, uh, like the, the more obviously, uh, I don't know, there's other shapes that are better done in the normal map. We don't want to have to struggle and Substance Painter trying to recreate this detail and messing with the positioning of the UVs or anything like that. So I'm just going to model that in. And this is very straightforward. So I'm, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, four. And first, I'm actually going to make this a little bit taller. Cool. 
This handle, this whole handle, I think is way too tall, but I mean, you know, let's start working on that. So we kind of want this to be right here. It's not perfectly flat on the surface, but don't really care that much. If I select this, oh, it actually selects the component. Now I want this to select the whole group. Push it like that. This is actually how it looks over here. Over here, they're a lot tinier though. Uh, maybe I should make these tiny, smaller. Yeah, let's do that. So because we're using Maya, it's very easy to just go into component mode for uh, multiple elements. Select the whole thing, move this up. Should just get rid of this. I just look. Actually, let's move this down and then, I know, let's make this smaller, but make it wider. How do we do that? Select all, of, uh, go into component mode for everything. Select this right here. Move this out. And move this as well. Just a little bit. Okay, and remember what I said. We select this piece and then we mirror across the object pivot. Then we do the same thing with this one. I just press G and where's the object? Object. Wait a minute, where's my object pivot? Oh, it's all messed up. Uh, how can I transfer the pivot from this to this? I think it's you click this and then the object that you want to transfer your pivot to and then go to modify. Mm, where is this, where is this? Mesh transformations. I only care about translation. Whoops, nope. So it's this one in reverse. Select this one first, then this one. Modify, let's just keep this window right here. Oh, match pivots. Excellent, now this has the same pivot as this. Just the, the pivot point, not the actual rotation, but that's all I need. So now I can mirror across object and it looks like we're gonna have the same issue with this one so select this this modify match pivots excellent just looking a little bit more like this Pretty good. Now we just need a little bit more detail here. And hmm. let's actually scale this. Let's center the pivot. Let's scale that out a little bit. I think these should be wider. Hello? Oh, that's wrong. Transformation. Move. I should just move this one as well. Fortunately, though, that means I'm going to have to mirror again. Um, okay, enough the mirroring. Wait a minute. I oh, know, yeah, it's all good. Forgot that I could have just tapped G to uh, reactivate the same command. Okay, that's a little bit nicer. And oh, yeah, the detail here uh, four. So, very easily, we just select this and then bevel it. 
and we'll just change the segments. We have three, four. Now I'll just give them a similar amount of distance between them, like this. And then just select all of them and bevel them again. A little bit more, just so that are, I'm trying to make them a little bit wider than they are in the picture because, again, I just want to make things more visible. So control one, and let's just select the whole, uh, the entire loops and then deselect what we don't need. Okay, let's extrude inwards. And I'm probably going to remove this detail from the low poly, but again, it's best to have as much as you can in the high poly. And if we subdivide, it kind of looks like that. So we need a few edge loops to control this a little bit better. So where do we want to add these? Okay on the insides I'm thinking. So edge loop right here, middle mouse. What does that look like? It doesn't look very good. I mean, it's more accurate, but that is not what I wanted. Because again, this, this type of very sharp detail does not read very well in normal maps. I'm considering just leaving it like that, to be honest. What I can do is let's try adding the loop on the outside. So I'm just adding loops right here in the middle. Let me turn off the wireframe. And you see it sharpens up the detail a little bit. And if I need to sharpen it more, I can just bevel these edges. And the more I increase the offset, then the sharper they're going to be. Let's try that. That's better. It's not too sharp, but it's not too soft either. I'm happy with that. We have enough room here for some sort of uh, decal as well. And I'm missing this detail right here. Let me just make sure I check all of the other handles. Do I really want to make these wider? Yes. You know, this is a situation where modifiers are incredibly useful because it kind of saves you from having to uh, mirror so often. But my, it doesn't have modifiers. It has construction history, which, which is very similar, but it's not quite as convenient. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's an easier way of doing this, but there doesn't seem to be, so... Let me just see what it looks like. I might not actually like making these things thicker. Okay. And by the way, if you don't want, if you're always changing settings here on one of your tools, what you can do instead is go to the option box and change the settings right here and then apply it. And every following operation is going to have the settings you, you use right here. For instance, if I set this to be object and then just mirror it, then the next time I make a change, for example, on this tool and I go to mirror, you'll see object is the one that's selected by default. So I don't have to change it all the time. Excellent. Now let's make that little detail right there. And or actually, let's just keep it simple. 
Let's add an edge loop in the middle. Wait, it doesn't go all the way through because it's probably an N-Gon, so select the whole thing, shift C, and bevel all the way here. My scale tool, hold on shift, scale that. Okay, then hold down shift again and move that in. And subdivide it, it looks horrible, but all we have to do is add an edge loop in the middle. That helps a little bit. I guess we need a few more edge loops. So let's add another one in the middle. Oh, this time we can add an edge loop. I guess this area is now quads. Yeah, here are the end guns. Okay. So let's bevel this. Move this whole thing closer so we can't see the gaps. That way I don't have to worry about adding some sort of cylinder in the middle that show you shows you how this thing is uh, like connected. And mirror, excellent. That looks pretty good, we're almost done. So to move this over here, the script I'm using isn't actually designed to mirror uh, several objects at once. I've never really got around coding that because again, I'm not really good at coding. So I'm pretty sure if I try to mirror this whole group, it's not gonna work. Let's just see what happens. So shift X. <laughs> yeah, it's not really designed for that. So very easily, I have a hotkey to set my pivot to the origin because Kind of going to need it, but what was that hotkey? What was it? It was Alt O. Okay, but for those of you that aren't using my hotkeys, let's see. How can we do this? I've never actually done this without my hotkey, I don't think. I mean, you can do it by hand, and I know I said do most things by hand, but let's figure this out. Let's edit the pivot and zero zero does that work i don't think that worked <laughs> i think it screwed it up more oh oh this is not the pivot coordinates whoops where can i set my pivot coordinates oh i think that's what this is for it might be hidden by uh un under these little arrows so let's try that i've never actually tried this zero 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 Hey, that works. And that's how you can set your pivot to the origin. Don't forget to tap the D key. I didn't mention that, but you tap D and then you can move your pivot or hold on X and snap it to the origin or type in zero, zero, zero. Excellent. And the reason we did that is so now I can control D to duplicate, go to my scale tool, hold down J, which is snapping and scale the other way. Perfect. Now I can select both of these, control D, and then scale backwards. Or you can just find the axis right here and make sure you add a minus in front of it. Enter, and then it will show up back here. And you might want to freeze your transformations after. Uh, I don't really care about that right now, so I'm not going to do that. And actually these things, these things, I'm gonna remake something there later because I am i don't actually like reusing this piece. But also for now, we're gonna leave it there. 